Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and today I'm sitting down with Brennan Forster. Not only is he an aspiring trader, but he's also somebody who helps me out with a lot of my videography. You know, the more recent videos that have a little bit of a higher quality on them, well, he's doing a great job helping me out. And being an aspiring trader, he said, you know, Jared, I have some questions for you about trading. And I thought this would be a good opportunity for him to ask me some questions, but let's do it in front of the camera instead of behind the camera so that I can help some of you guys out as well. And stick around towards the end because we're also gonna pull out a few viewer questions that I've been getting over the last several weeks, several months, and answer some of those questions as well. Welcome, Brennan. Thanks for having me, Jared. I really appreciate your time. And by the way, your place is so beautiful. Thanks, I appreciate that. So as I've been working behind the camera, I've gotten a pretty solid glimpse of your life and I'm very impressed by the freedom and flexibility that you have. Um, but I keep hearing that trading is like gambling. Um, and if that's the case, you must be the world's best gambler because... <laughs> that's actually a really great question. Um, and to be honest, most traders are gamblers, all right? But professional trading is not about gambling, okay? Why? Because we always have an entry, a stop, and a target for every trade. So if I risk $100 on a trade and it goes minus $100, I am out, I'm done, I'm finished, okay? If it goes up to my target, I'm done, I'm finished. So I know all the parameters of my trade before I take the trade, okay? This isn't Wall Street bets. This isn't GameStop. This isn't YOLO. I don't have diamond hands, okay? None of that crap that they talk about. But I have to admit, one of my pet peeves in the industry is when people do call traders gamblers because the average investor, honestly, they just buy, hold, and hope. Buy, hold, and hope. They buy a stock, they hold it, and they hope it goes up, but they have no idea what their loss limit is. You know what their loss limit normally is? Pain, okay? Pain. When it goes low enough, they get out, okay? So really good trading is using a trading plan, knowing exactly what your process is all about. It's a systematic way to make money based on odds. So how do we get the odds in our favor then? We use specific patterns based off specific charts with really good trade management. So for example, I typically shoot for a three to one target, okay? So let me ask you a question. If I shoot for a three to one target, how often do I have to be right just to break even? 25%. Wow, that's actually pretty good. Most people would say like 33%, but you're right. I only have to be right 25% of the time to be flat, to be even. Okay, so if I'm right anything more than 25%, even 1%, I make money. Okay, and think of it like this. A baseball player can hit three balls out of 10, right? Bat 300, and they make millions and millions of dollars. Okay, well in trading, if you bat 30, 40, 50%, you can make a ton of money. So the point simply is, you really don't have to be right that often. We don't have to be perfect. Pat chart patterns are great, but they're not perfect which is awesome because well, we don't have to be. So how long does it take to make money? <laughs> if I had a nickel for every time that somebody asked me that question, I'd probably be richer than Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates put together. Um, that's the $64,000 question. Um, the problem with that question is everybody is different. Okay, so the internet will have you believe you can make money in 30 days, 60 days. Hey, I took $500 and turned it into $3 million, okay? But the truth of the matter is making money in trading is very, very challenging. It will likely take you two to three years to be consistently profitable at a small, small level, okay? So I don't want people thinking this is a get-rich-quick business. I don't want people coming in unprepared, undercapitalized. Uh, one of the comments I usually make to people is they come in overhyped, undercapitalized, and with expectations that grossly exceed their experience level. I mean, you wouldn't go out and play Tiger Woods for $10,000 a hole in golf if you had never played golf, would you? No, not even after his car crash, you probably wouldn't do it, okay? So it's going to take a good two or three years to get, gain profitability, and that's if you're diligent, and that's if you follow the rules. There's a lot of things that go into being a profitable trader. So what is one piece of advice that you would give a new aspiring trader? Um, don't start. 
<laughs> I'm only halfway serious when I say that, but I am somewhat serious. Trading is very, very difficult. I mean, perhaps the hardest thing that you can try in this world. I know people think, um, oh, I can do it. I went to Harvard. I went to MIT and all that stuff. This is a tough business, okay? So if you're not going to be disciplined, if you're not going to give it the proper time that it deserves, do not start this business. It will. I promise you. Everybody out there watching and listening, I promise you, this is going to take you two to three years to get good at. I don't care what your guru told you, or your guru told you, or the internet told you. I am telling you, okay, what it's going to be like for you. Um, so if you're not going to do that, don't start. But the next best piece of advice I can give you is money management, okay? There is nothing cool, nothing good about blowing up a trading account. Some people will tell you, oh yeah, you gotta blow up a couple accounts before you really learn the business. No, you don't. That's BS to the highest level, okay? If you come in risking $5 or $10 per trade, you can make a lot of mistakes and not lose a lot of money, right? I mean, so first, money management. Make sure you're risking very small amounts of money. And I don't care if you're Jeff Bezos, I'd give him the same advice because losing money unnecessarily is just stupid, okay? So money management, Build a trading plan, okay, and that trading plan is your guideline, and then get yourself an education, okay, and that's not a pitch for education or live traders. I mean it. I don't care who you are in life. You either go to college, you have a boss that trains you, a company that trains you, an apprenticeship that trains you, an internship that trains you. We're human beings. We don't plug USB drives into our heads, okay? We have to learn from somebody. Okay, so to recap, money management, discipline, and training are the most important things for a new trader. Yeah, absolutely, but don't forget the time aspect. It's going to take two or three years to get really good at this. Okay, so what are the best things about trading? Oh man, there's a lot of great things about trading, and this is why I can see that it's become so popular recently, okay? The freedom, the flexibility, um, the time. I mean, I can do this from anywhere in the world. I mean, Tokyo, to Florida, to Pennsylvania, to Arizona, to wherever I want. Um, so all those things are wonderful. I also love the limitless potential of the business. I mean, you can literally make billions of dollars. There are billionaire traders out there. Okay, so all that's wonderful. The other thing I like, especially being on the West Coast, is my neighbors are usually, you know, closing their garage door to go to work and I'm finished for the day and they're gonna drive in some rush hour traffic they're going to get to a job where their boss may or may not have had a good night last night and he may or she may or may not yell at them, okay? So now all of everybody else's feelings are being projected upon you at a job you really didn't like in the first place, but you have to do it because you need the money. Well, in trading, you get to make all those determinations for yourself. Why? Because it's the greatest meritocracy that exists in the world today. So what do you mean by that meritocracy? What meritocracy means is merit-based, okay? Which means that the market doesn't care who you are, doesn't care who I am, all right? And, and that means that it's fair for everybody. Now, this doesn't mean that Wall Street doesn't have an advantage on us. They do, they have more money than us, they have better access than us, they have co-location, they have a lot of smart people. But when it comes to traders, okay? Whether it's you, whether it's me, it doesn't matter. We're all the same. So what I love about it is the market doesn't care where you went to school. The market doesn't care where I went to school. The market doesn't care what your ethnicity is. It doesn't care if you're Latino, if you're black, if you're Asian, if you're white. It, it doesn't care. It doesn't care if you went to the local community college, if you went to Harvard, or if you went to no school at all, if you didn't even graduate high school. The market doesn't care. The market doesn't have a boss. You don't have a boss, which means there's nobody holding you down. It's just you. So when you look in the mirror, successful or unsuccessful, it's all about you. And the reason I bring this up, in today's society we have a lot of talk about censorship, we have a lot of talk about this is fair and this isn't fair and all this other stuff, okay? Privilege is the new topic of the day. There is no privilege in trading. There's no, you can't post your Harvard degree in front of your monitor and say, market, I went to Harvard. And they go, oh, nepotism, you know, here's a thousand dollars. Doesn't work that way. Okay? You can't walk in and go, oh, you're white, here's your privilege, here's $2,000. Okay? The market doesn't know who's staring back at it, so it couldn't be discriminatory to anybody, which is wonderful. So anybody out there that feels like they've been discriminated against or not been discriminated against, trading is the perfect business for you because it's fair for everyone that starts. I love it, it's beautiful because you can say, I'm successful because of me. If you failed, there's no one else to blame. There's no victim mentality, there's no socioeconomics, there's none of it, okay? So for me, 
that's a pretty big deal with trading. You're limitless in your potential. All right, so now that you've highlighted all the good things about trading, what are the worst things about trading? There are definitely, as in any business, some things that uh, are challenging in, in the trading business. Uh, for me, the deep dive into my inner emotions, okay? Trading is a very psychological business and we all have egos. And depending on how big or small your ego is, it's probably gonna affect your trading. I came, I spent some time on Wall Street and I had a big ego. On Wall Street, they have what they call smart money and dumb money. Well, Wall Street's the smart money and everyone else is the dumb money. So I thought I was the smart money. So I came into this with a big ego. I'll get this quicker than anybody else. I'll make more money than anybody else. Well, man, the market slapped me silly and humbled me. So that first one or two years, that roller coaster ride, because it took me a good solid two plus years to get what I would call consistent at a very small profitability level. Um, so that, that roller coaster ride of emotion, super, super frustrating. So for example, you might have a really bad Monday and it takes you Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, just to make that money back. Or the opposite, you might do really well Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and have a really bad Friday, and your week is break even or you're down, all because of one bad trade or one mistake or one bad day. And the people out there watching, I know you know what I'm talking about, because it happens, right? Or people will have this happen. They trade well for 90% of the month, and they let one bad day or two bad days destroy the whole month. And that's what I mean by it's going to take you two or three years to get consistent. You might be an okay trader after six months or a year, but you won't be consistent. You'll have an up month, a down month, an up month, a down month. You'll go on a winning streak for two months and you'll give it all back in one week. Again, y'all know what I'm talking about, okay? So those are the things that are really, really frustrating about trading because it's a deep dive into your emotions and it preys on your ego and we all have an ego. And the one last thing I would say is, Almost everybody in life to some capacity has a boss. And that boss does what? Keeps you in check, right? If you don't show up on time, they warn you. If you do it again, they warn you. If you do it a third time, they fire you. Well, what happens in trading if you break your plan once? Ah, I'll fix it tomorrow. What if you break it twice? I'll fix it tomorrow. What if you break it a third or a fourth or a fifth time? Who's gonna fire you? Nobody, right? I mean, I, I, unless you fire yourself, and most people wouldn't do that. You know that phrase like, you give them an inch, they take a mile? That's what we do with ourselves. Because generally, naturally, we all have high opinions of ourselves. And you think, well, I'll just, I'll study hard this weekend, I'll meditate this weekend, and Monday morning, I'm just, I'm ready to rock and roll. Monday comes around, 10 minutes into the market open, boom, you're making the same damn mistakes. <sighs> okay, so how do you overcome these things? Man, that might be the best question you ask all day. Um, because that is the $64,000 question. That's the rub. That's what separates the bad trader from the average trader and the average trader from the really good trader. I've found through my experience, and believe me, I'm a hard head, okay? Um, even though I'm overly critical on myself, I still give myself a lot of latitude. So what I've told traders to do and what you guys out there listening should be doing is you need to get some type of trading partner, trading buddy. And what this person is going to do, they're going to keep you on the straight and narrow. Okay, what you need to have is some form of consequence system. So what I call it is an accountability partner. You need to find someone or something that holds you accountable. So for example, at the end of the day, you have to explain every trade you took to your wife or to a trading buddy or someone where there's a reciprocal process where they help you and hold you accountable. So let me give you an example. And, and to be fair, this accountability, this consequence has to be severe, right? I mean, we don't do 150 miles an hour on the highway because we don't want to go to jail. Well, what is it in trading or what is it in your life that would be severe enough to stop you from doing it? So I'll give you an example. This, is, this came from about two years ago, a coaching student I had of mine. Um, this person was an ap I mean, hardcore devout Catholic, this person was, okay? And this guy was having a really hard time following his trading plan, okay? And I said, you need to make a consequence system. He's like, I did. And I asked him what it was and it, it just wasn't serious. I can't play golf for two weeks. So what, right? So what? That's not that big of a deal. You're not Tiger Woods. You don't play that often anyway. So I said to him, I said, how about this? You're a hardcore Catholic. Yep, uh-huh. He said, so you, you're against abortion, right? Oh, can't stand it, Jared. It's against my religion, so to speak, right? And this isn't a comment on what side of the aisle you're on. It's irrelevant. I said, all right, how about this then? I said, how about every time you break your trading plan, every time, you have to go to the local Planned Parenthood and give them $100 and donate it for somebody that wants to have an abortion. He said, oh, 
<laughs> I said, F, no, I'm not doing that, Jared. That's insane. That's against my religion. I said, so it shouldn't be that hard then, huh? I said, if that consequence is that severe that you could never even imagine it, then you probably won't break your trading plan. I said, so let me give you an analogy I gave him, and I understand it's not a, it's not a very tasteful analogy, but you'll get the point. If you were in a trade and it said, I have to hold that trade to $100, and you're having a hard time doing that, somebody pulled your kid upstairs, put a gun to their head and said, $100 or I pulled the trigger. It's the easiest $100 you ever made. You're not going to let that person, it's your flesh and blood, right? Now, again, not a tasteful analogy, but you understand the severity. What's the point of this? What's the lesson? Most people's consequences are not severe enough that they'll adhere to them. Okay? So make your consequences severe enough. That's how you overcome these things. Okay? And one last quick caveat. Make sure you build your trading plan around you. Okay? Don't just put a trading plan out there and go, I hope I can follow it. No. Think about your, your, your strengths and your weaknesses and say to yourself, okay, well, I'm a little bit patient, but I'm a bad stock picker. Well, maybe you need something that has high targets because you cannot have a huge batting average and still make money. Maybe you're a great stock picker, but you're not patient. What do you do there? Well, pick small targets because you're more accurate. See what I'm saying? So pick something that suits your personality style, and that's something you'll learn in your first three, six, nine months. Wow, Jared, I didn't realize there was so much involved in trading. I honestly thought it was a quick way to make a million bucks. That's kind of what they advertise on YouTube. Um, and I, I really appreciate your honesty and integrity. Um, you've given me so much valuable information today. And you've probably saved me thousands of dollars in mistakes. Um, I thought I needed to blow up an account to become a successful trader. Um, so I'm a visual learner. Would you be willing to show me your trading setup and you know to kind of explain the charts and whatnot? Yeah, honestly, you, I think it's probably a good idea. We should do that. I have to get out of a trade anyway that I'm in before the market closes. Um, so yeah, let's head back to my office and I'll show you my setup, my rig, and all that stuff. Yeah, before we get started, you gotta give me a second. I gotta get out of this trade, this NCLA trade I've been in for. Uh, a little bit here and uh, I'm almost I'm almost finished with it I'm just about at my target here and okay boom good done with that wait did you just make two grand on that trade yeah I just made two thousand and sixteen dollars on that trade it takes my friends like a month to make two grand yeah no I, I I get it I completely get it but to be realistic you know when you were you're new at anything you can't expect to make that kind of money your first few months so yeah I mean yeah it's pretty nice being able to make a couple thousand dollars in what about 20 minutes that took me something like that um, so yeah let me take a second here to kind of explain my setup for you so over here on the left hand side I have my thumbnail watch list this is where I watch all my ideas okay in the middle here I have my order entry matrix where I buy stocks and where I sell stocks um, okay and what is this right here that's actually a good question this is where I scan Okay, you'll see I just changed the screen there. Um, so when I'm looking for an idea, like I want to get a new opportunity, I want the, my next trade, so to speak. I, I, you know, look at it over here. Um, so basically, as you can see, it's not super complicated. I mean, yeah, I know when you first look at it, it looks like maybe NASA, but now that you're here, um, I, I don't think it's too too bad. What do you think? Yeah, I definitely think I have a better understanding after today. So let me see if I got it. This is your, these are your thumbnails, mm -hmm. this is your order entry, yep. and these are your scanning charts. Perfect. See, so that wasn't too bad. I mean, honestly, Brandon, you're getting it pretty quick. I'm impressed. I mean, so like I said, it looks intimidating, but now that you're in front of it, you got that pretty quick. So honestly, I'm, I'm finished trading for the day, so why don't we just go outside and finish this and get some fresh air? All right, Jared, so I have some questions from your subscribers. Um, Stephanie M. wants to know how much money she can expect to make in her first year of trading. None. none. Zero. None. I mean, I know that's not what people want me to say, um, but realistic ex expectation for your first year is to break even, honestly. If you break even after one year of trading, you've had a successful year. Uh, don't even think about making money until year two or year three. And I don't mean that in any disrespect, Stephanie, but none so what should that do for you it should give you more confidence honestly it should make you feel good about yourself if you're not making money after nine months or 12 months it's it's normal all right so i have another question from andy b he wants to know how much money does he need to get started in trading um you know that's a tough question i mean the sec and finra say you need twenty five thousand dollars to get past the pattern day trading rule so realistically you should have twenty five thousand dollars or more but 
you could trade with a lot less than that. Honestly, if you have a thousand or two thousand dollars, you could trade with that. Um, but I would recommend the more the better, five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand uh, dollars, because if you trade with a thousand or two thousand dollars, it doesn't give you a lot of flexibility. It's not that you need the money when you first start, but the problem is you're only going to be limited to about three trades per week. So again, you can start with a thousand bucks, but it's better to have more. All right. So a question from Cindy: What's the most profitable pattern that she can learn? Um, that's a very common question, Cindy. Uh, there isn't one. Meaning, the pattern that you learn to the highest ability is the best pattern that you can trade. Uh, it's kind of like asking a golfer, well, what's the best club in your bag? Every golfer is going to give you a different answer. So for some people, it's a three bar play. For some people, it's a climactic buy setup. For some people, it's a buy setup. Some people, it's a sell setup. Some people, it's a breakout. Some people, it's a double bottom retest and failure. There's, there's tons. Um, so I think the three bar play is the simplest pattern that they could probably learn when they begin. Um, but the pattern you learn to the highest level. So I'll say this, when you're new, pick one or two patterns, max one or two, and learn them to the highest level. And once you've learned them, then you can add more tools to your toolbox. All right. So final question from Mohammed. Um, he wants to know what's the best platform he should use to day trade. Definitely not Robinhood. Okay, that's the one thing I can tell everybody, um, unless, you know, YOLO. Um, but anyway, uh, I would say in my experience, TradeStation, Interactive Brokers, Think or Swim, uh, those are really good uh, platforms. Don't get me wrong, there's plenty of other platforms out there like Das Trader, Lightspeed, et cetera, and so forth. Um, but those three I just mentioned are kind of the big boys of the industry, so to speak. Um, I just wouldn't be trading off your cell phone. I wouldn't be trading you know, on, on Robinhood or eToro or whatever you know, those other ones are. Um, but uh, yeah, again, a lot of options, a lot of choices. And, and, and I'm speaking mostly for people that are based in the United States. Um, I know not all those platforms are available in every country around the world. I get that question frequently as well. Um, so if you're based in the US, I'd say TradeStation, Interactive Brokers, and Think or Swim. Uh, if you're in Europe, those are still good platforms, but they may not be available in every country. Jared, thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule to answer some of my questions, along with some of your subscribers' questions. I'm sure they really appreciated that. Um, if people out there want to learn more about trading, where should they go? So if people want to learn more about trading and live traders, they can go to the Live Traders website, which is livetraders.com, and I would highly recommend that they download this. This is Trader's Guide to Success. This is a free, you heard me, free ebook that you can download on the livetraders.com website. It will teach you a lot about trading. It's about 80 pages, and unlike most other ebooks out there, it's not fluff. This is hardcore content, just like my weekly videos on YouTube, okay? So you might learn something about trading that you didn't know, and you might say, hey, I'm not interested in trading after reading this. Or they might actually say, wow, I'm more interested in trading after reading this. So livetraders.com, download your trader's guide to success. Thanks, Brennan. I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Thank you so much, Jared.